The key question is to what extent was the Managua earthquake a main cause of the Nicaraguan Revolution? Opposition to Somoza expanded greatly after 1972 as a result of the corruption after the earthquake destroyed much of Nicaragua's capital. Business leaders, the Catholic Church, and guerrilla rebels began to oppose the regime separately and gradually, while the rural poor continued to remain uninvolved until the late 1970s. Opposition in cities expanded greatly as a reaction to increased awareness of corruption and the murder of a major opposition leader. December 23, 1972, a major earthquake leveled 80% of Managua, Nicaragua's capital, killing 10,000 people and leaving the majority of the population homeless. Hundreds of millions of dollars of emergency aid flowed into the country, primarily from the United States, to rebuild the city. Most of the money was directed by the Somoza family into his family's businesses, which received most rebuilding contracts. Buildings and businesses owned by the Somoza family and their allies were built first, and then housing for the wealthy. High import taxes were placed on construction materials needed by rival construction companies. Therefore, Somoza had very little VOCA opposition other than the minor and ineffectual opposition of Chamorro and the FSLN or Sandinistas. Now, though, the urban middle classes, both liberals and conservatives, began to see the president's greed as threatening their economic existence. Many business owners belong to the Superior Council of Private Initiative, or COSIP, and in March 1974, they organized a large gathering of private businessmen. They issued a public statement accusing Somoza of corruption in the use of earthquake relief funds. Chamorro was able, in this new political climate of opposition to Somoza, to organize a new party called the Democratic Union of Liberation, or UDEL, a coalition of seven political parties and labor unions. The Sandinistas had been forgotten by almost everyone, and it was assumed wrongly that the organization had come to an end in 1972. On December 27, 1974, at a Christmas party for the U.S. ambassador to Nicaragua, a small group of Sandinistas, including 10 men and three women, took the Nicaraguan foreign minister and Somoza's brother-in-law hostage, as well as many wealthy businessmen. Roman Catholic Archbishop Miguel Bravo negotiated with the rebels over a two-day period, leading to the government agreeing with the Sandinistas' demands. Some of the demands were they demanded that 14 rebels be released from prison, one million in cash, publication in the national newspapers of NFSLN composed statement on Samosa, and a flight to Cuba. As soon as the rebels had flown to Cuba, the National Guard began an aggressive campaign to root out Sandinista rebels wherever they could find them. This renewed campaign almost destroyed the Sandinistas, who were few in number and splintered the survivors. There was dissension among the surviving Sandinistas' leadership regarding the Christmas party raid, which some saw as a great success and others as a strategic mistake. The three Sandinista factions competed for followers and support from Cuba. There was a proletarian faction. This was led, led by Jamie, we Jamie Wheatlock, and he would believe that instead of carrying out spectacular but counterproductive raids, the Sandinistas should be working to educate people about Marxist principles, which would eventually lead to a change in the system. This group opposed working with other political parties and the Catholic Church as they were seen as contributing to Nicaragua's poverty and corruption. There was also the prolonged popular war group, which were strongly Marxist. They believed that a guerrilla war in the countryside against the National Guard and major estate owners would lead to governmental change. 
And then there was, there was the Terceristas. The Terceristas were the largest faction. They believed the best way to remove the governing system, specifically the Somoza dynasty, was to build alliances with all groups. This included working with business owners and even the Catholic Church. Somoza ordered the National Guard to crush the Sandinistas in early 1975. The Christmas party raid had raised the profile of Sandinistas, and that, coupled with the COSIP statement and the formation of UDEL, led to a crackdown. The press was heavily censored, and opposition leaders were threatened with prison and torture. The National Guard conducted anti-guerrilla operations against the prolonged Popular Front in the Northern Mountains, killing the majority of its leadership. Peasant farms and villages were destroyed in the north and the east, driving thousands of peasants away so that Sandinistas would have no local support or access to food. Hundreds of peasants were tortured and killed in order to gain information on Sandinista movements. Hundreds disappeared by the end of 1975, probably killed, and mass graves were discovered by Catholic missionaries. The Catholic Church sent a protest to the government about human rights violations in early 1976. The National Guard was accused of killing 200 peasants who were unaffiliated with rebel groups. While some priests claimed the number was actually around 400, the National Guard did not deny killing the peasants and simply responded that the victims had worked with rebel guerrillas. The Catholic Church would increasingly criticize the government over its actions. By 1975, the Sandinista factions based in Nicaragua were practically wiped out by the National Guard actions. The Tercerista leaders were saved by being mostly in Cuba. Other members were hiding in Nicaragua or in Costa Rica, waiting for their chance. 